all of us know or know of Letitia. I will turn it over to her and she's going to share a little bit more about, you know, as we, as we shared entrepreneurial spirit and also her role in the community and in her Mind Foundation. So I'm excited for her to share more. I'm sure she will share about her upcoming virtual event that we should all be excited for. And so now it is my pleasure to turn it over to Letitia. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here today. Thank you guys for asking me. As Samantha mentioned, I am from Lake County. So most of you guys know where Lake County is up there, Middletown, Clear Lake area. When I was about five years old, my parents moved me and my brother from pretty diverse Berkeley. That's where I was born down in the Bay Area up to Lake County. Unfortunately, when we moved up to Lake County, there were kids that had never seen a Black person before, and I was severely bullied for many years because of the color of my skin. As a little girl, uh, growing up there in Lake County, little Tish, I would say that I was called, I felt ugly. I felt ashamed. I felt stupid. I felt like I didn't belong. I felt very lonely, and I was always hiding because of the torture that I endured as a black kid in an all white school. So when I was about seven years old, eight years old, one of my teachers, cause I would hide out by this big oak tree to eat my lunch. So kids wouldn't steal my lunch or pick on me or call me names in word every day. And one of my teachers came over to me and she said, come to my classroom tomorrow. And I came to her classroom at lunch and she put a trumpet in my hands. And every day at lunch, she taught me how to play the trumpet and read music. And music ended up being my saving grace. It was my way to express myself, to feel better about myself. And here I am playing in the elementary brand when I was eight years old. And I just started having more confidence. I felt smart and determined and hopeful again. I felt very free. Music helped free a lot of that, all of that hardship of the bullying that I endured. I felt started feeling beautiful and I felt loved. When I was eight, I started playing with the high school band and I was this little elementary kids with all these high schoolers and they would start sticking up for me when the bullies would come around and I started making friends and people just started accepting me for the person that I was, not the black girl that I was. And it just changed everything for me. So naturally, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I want to be a rock star. I'm going to, you know, I learned how to play piano and drums. And I still play drums now. And I decided when I graduated from high school that I wanted to go into music and performing arts. So I came here to Sonoma State University and uh, studied music and performing and recording arts. But as maybe some of you were in college, I was very broke. <laughs> I was not making a lot of money going to school full time, even working three jobs at some times. And I needed to get a really, really good paying job. So while I was taking my music courses, I got a job at a roofing company. And I started working there just simply as a receptionist, answering phones, filing, just the basic receptionist duties. But after about a year and a half, I caught the office manager. She was embezzling from my boss who were, they were best friends for like 30 years. I'm like, well, how do I tell my boss that his best friend of 30 years is stealing from him? So I told the accountant instead. So she told my boss and he fired her. And he came to me and said, would you like to have this position as the office manager? And I'm like, sure. You know, I was pretty much doing all of her job anyway at that point. So I started working there as the office manager. And then I became the manager over a couple of years and started running the business. And my boss said, hey, you know, I want to retire in a few years and I would like for you to buy my company. And I'm just like, I, I'm not a roofer. <laughs> like, how am I going to, you know, buy a roofing company? As a, and he said, well, are you willing to learn? And I said, sure. And I was like 20 something. I was like 21. So, you know, in your 20s, you're just like, yeah, I'll do anything. So that's basically what I said. <laughs> and, and I learned how to roof for four years, um, about four and a half years, actually. And once I learned how to roof, I was able to go and get my own contractor's license. So when my boss retired, I then uh, decided to actually start my own company from scratch, um, which is now called ARS Roofing and Gutters. And that was in 2004. So I've been doing this roofing thing. And of course, it's very exciting to be, you know, your own boss and be the CEO. But now I'm in a whole nother world. I'm in the world of construction, which is predominantly white males in this industry. So it was not the most 
easy you know transition for me to come into this world of construction especially when i did because there weren't a lot of females in construction but there especially weren't any black females in uh, construction and roofing so there were a lot of obstacles that i had to overcome one of course sexism just contractors telling people that I don't know what I'm talking about, or I don't know what I'm doing. Of course, now I've been here 25 years, so I guess I proved them wrong on that. But one of the things that I experienced a lot was I was hiding again, like I was as a little girl, I would sign my name L.R. Hanky, so that way people would think that I was a man. And, And it worked for a while, actually. But then there was this one time about eight years ago, I went to meet a client and over the phone, they, it was an older couple, so they, they didn't really do the internet type thing. You know, they weren't checking out my website and stuff. And so, and again, I would, like I said, I was in hiding at that point. I didn't have my face on anything. I signed my name, L.R. Hanky. And over the phone, they were great. We, were, we had a great rapport. They were ready to sign their contract. Let's go do this. I'm like, great. I'll meet you at your house. I'll bring sample boards. We'll get the contract signed. I come to their home and uh, the wife answers the door and she goes, <gasps> and I'm like, oh, hi, I'm Letitia, you know, and I stick my hand down. She shakes my hand. And then her husband, Roy, walks over and, and I'm like, Roy, hi, great to meet you. And I put my hand out and he looked down at my hand, back at me again, down at my hand again and walked away. And at that point, I'm just like, do I do I run or do I continue this meeting? The wife invited me into the kitchen. We sat down. We were going over the contract and such. And then I said, so color did, you know, what, which roof did you decide on? And she's like, well, actually, we're probably not going to go ahead and move forward at this time. We appreciate you coming out, but I think we're not going to, you know, do our roof at this time. I said, okay, I've got the sample board here. If you just like to look at some colors for the future, she said, let's just go ahead and do that on your way out. I said, okay, no problem. And I was there five minutes. So I'm walking out the door with all my stuff. Roy comes back over as I'm walking out the door and he says, I just want to let you know, we have an alarm system on our house. And if anyone tries to break in, it's going to go off really loud. And I smiled and I said, thank you very much for your time. You guys have a great day. I walked, got in my car, drove around the corner and I bawled my eyes out because that was the first time in my adult life that I had experienced racism to my face. And it was rough. And I went back to my office and I took that contract and I put it through the shredder and I told my whole staff, there's going to be some changes around here. And that's when I rebranded my entire company. I put my face on everything. I changed all my business cards to my full name. And I made sure that everyone knew that not only I was a female, but I was a black female in this industry. And this is what my old card used to look like back in the day (laughs) with the LR hanky. Hey, is Mr. Hanky here? You know, that's what I would get all the time. This is my new, my new and improved <laughs> Letitia. Letitia Hanky, I signed my full name. I put my face on everything so everyone knows right away, you know, and this is some of my new branding <laughs> that I do as well. One of my graphic designers, she's like, you know what, you're super tish. I'm going to do this graphic. And she put me in a little cape, but it felt good. It felt once again, free. I felt like I was freeing myself once again, and it made it made my life so much better. I started working with clients that want to actually work with me. You know, I don't have to go through that obstacle of them not knowing that I'm a female and not knowing that I'm black because they know that the minute that they call my office. So it feels really good. So if any of you are, you know, have that kind of issue in your life and your business lives, you know, just think about becoming free of those obstacles because it worked for me. So my business catapulted. I mean, the minute I started coming out as female and also, you know, as black female, People wanted to do business with me and my, my business grew so much. And I'm always, I've always been someone that wants to give back to my community, but mainly going back to some of the things that I've dealt with as a, as a kid, I wanted to be able to find a way to do something for community. And I started a nonprofit called the Lyme Foundation. Now, most people think that it's either Lyme disease, which is a Y, so that's definitely not it, um, but or something with lemons and grapefruits and limes and stuff. It has nothing to do with any of that because it's actually my son. His, his name spelled backwards. My son's name is Emil. Today is his 19th birthday. And 
Lime is the, the name that kids used to call him when they bullied him. My son is multiracial. So when he was about seven or eight years old, kids used to call him N-word. But the other thing they used to call him was Lime, just to pick on him with his name. And that was the first time that I had the chance to sit down with him and tell him my story of what I went through as a kid, his age as well. And I called it Lime Foundation because I wanted it to be something that I will always work very hard for for the rest of my life. And that's the story of, of Lime, why it's called Lime. So I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about what, what Lime is about so you can understand how it pertains to me. It's a senior activities program. It's my, Turner is my maiden name. So it's a Turner Arts Initiative. I'll tell you about that in a moment. And then it's a roofing and construction vocational program called the Next Gen Trades Academy. So the senior activity program came about because my parents have been ill for most of my life, where there's heart disease, diabetes, they both had cancer and beat it, and they're on lots of medication. And I wanted to help seniors be healthier and over 55. So I started this program. It's a six-week program. Unfortunately, it got shut down by COVID because we used to go into senior homes, but we are looking forward to hopefully coming back next summer or fall of 2022. But now with this course, seniors can learn how to eat better and also have better mobility through our yoga program. These are our two instructors here. This is Jenny and this is Dot. Dot teaches the yoga program. She's 75 years old and she helps all of our seniors have, like I said, better mobility and be able to get some stretches. So it's very light duty. And then we teach them how to eat in their, their regular meals, but being able to add other, other items to their meals or take away stuff that can make that meal a little healthier. Healthier. And it's been a really great program. It worked for quite some time, but, you know, we're hoping to come back. And then my Turner Arts Initiative is my music program, which, of course, as I told you earlier, music was a big part of my life and a big part of me finally being a happier kid. So I wanted to help other young teens and young people be able to have that same outlet. So I created the Turner Arts Initiative, which is an after school and a summer program. And we teach photography and videography and dance and recording arts and music. And it gives them a chance to be able to have an outlet and a way to let go of all that. We have these positive and structured activities for them. And is, you know, my goal is to keep them out of trouble, you know, and also if I can help them through, you know, engaging in this type of activity is a positive thing for them. So we right now, since we did get shut down with this program with COVID as well, because it's an, it's an in-person class, we were still able to do our virtual classes. You can find us on YouTube under the Line Foundation and see our virtual talent shows. So we feature a lot of the students in Sonoma County and they win prizes and things. So we, we've been doing the showcases for them and it still helps them have a chance during COVID time safely to have an outlet. So that's still going on. And we have another one coming up this, this Christmas. And Kelly Clarkson show uh, saw one of our, they, they saw one of our, it was like a commercial thing that, that I did. And they went and saw that we had our arts program and it was during COVID, as you can see all these little zoom screens. So I didn't get to go to LA to her actual studio. We did everything online through zoom, which was still a blast. As you can see, I'm cheesing down there so much. Um, I had such a great time and it was really great for, for me to be able to bring on some of our students and our instructor. And we just had a really great time. So it felt really good to be recognized in that way. And lastly, our Next Gen Trades Academy. So you, this is obvious, right? I'm a roofing contractor. So, you know, it was important for me to help young ladies get into the construction trades, something that is unconventional, you know? So that's been my goal is to get more and more young ladies. But I also realized that a lot of our young people today don't want to go to college. You know, they either can't go to college they, or they just don't want to go to college. They, and in school, they're really taught, you know, you graduate from high school and you go straight to college. Now I went straight to college. That was great. I had a great experience, but I ended up dropping out in my senior year because I got that promotion and, you know, look where I am today. I don't promote dropping out of college or dropping out of high school, but that's what's happening today with our young people. They just they're not cut out for it. So we set up our Next Gen Trades Academy to introduce the trades to the young people that didn't know that they could have an amazing career in the construction trades. So our program curriculum consists of about 24 different trades. We have 169 contractors that are part of the program. They're mentors and they're also contractors that are hiring. What was also important to me was life skills. You know, it's not just about teaching these young people about trades, 
we needed to talk to them about the emotions and things that they're going through in life and financial literacy. So in this curriculum that we do, we also go over stress management course, how they can deal with stress management, especially during these hard times. Interview and public speaking, the importance of how, especially when they're doing interviews, by zoom right looking into the camera instead of over here so we're teaching them techniques of you know how to have be successful resume and cover letters real estate we add a real estate to the curriculum because we have a few young people that have been saving up money including my son to buy a home and so i wanted to teach them financial literacy on how they can actually save those funds and be able to actually do that so that's what we're teaching them and then health and nutrition if you know anything about teenagers or young people they're you know downing red bulls and maybe some of us are doing that too I don't know, but Doritos is their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, so we're teaching them about better health and nutrition and how that helps with their energy and brain health and overall body health. And then lastly, we're job placing all of these students in these counties right now, Sonoma, Marin, Napa, and Solano County. And then Santa Clara, we have a uh, an agreement with them in Silicon Valley to do training in, in March of 2022, and we'll be placing down in, in Silicon Valley in the heavy hit areas where there's low income students. So that's what's happening in our Trades Academy. I wanted to just show you a couple of photos because I'm super proud. Um, these are young people that we're just giving amazing opportunities to. And Alex right here standing next to me, he started working for me. Um, uh, he the first day of class he says I want to be a roofer the last day of class he said I want to be a roofer so I hired him and he worked for me for about two and a half years and then he came to me and said hey you know I've always wanted to work for Tesla um no offense to you I love working here but Tesla's been my dream I said well let's help make that dream come true I wrote a letter of recommendation over to the Tesla company and they hired him and he's now been working there for two years and he's now running his own crew. So I'm very proud of him. And I'm proud of all of these students. We do graduations for them. We took the class online. So COVID did not shut down this course. We just put it online. So now it's a, a Zoom class. And it's, we've done eight Zoom classes during this COVID period. And those students have been hired. Far 74% of our students have been hired full time out of our program. And we've had 185 students go through the program so far. So, and they've been hired mainly in Sonoma County. 98% have been hired here in Sonoma County. And Mike Rowe saw, <laughs> Mike Rowe is so funny. I, uh, they tricked me. Um, Mike Rowe's team contacted me about a year and a half ago and said, hey, we want to do this special on women in construction. And it was like a documentary. And I said, oh, my gosh, that's so exciting. I was so excited. And it was one of the producers of the Oprah Winfrey show. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what if Oprah sees it? Right. So they they tricked me for about a year and said, you know, we were going to get this documentary going. They came out, did some, you know, spotting and stuff. And I was on a job site with some of the crew and Mike Rowe comes up behind me and says, are you Letitia Henke? And I'm like, uh, yeah. I thought he was a film crew person. He was behind this fence. If you can see that picture. So I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm Letitia Henke. And then he comes around the side and I see him. It's a great video to watch. If you go on my website, you can actually find the video and watch it because it was it's just worth watching. You'll hear more about our Next Gen Trades Academy and just, you know, all the things that happened in my life. But it was really, really exciting to have this opportunity to be on that, that TV show. And we had a really great time. He gave a bunch of tools to us so that way now all of our students that graduate from the program, they get a bunch of tools and they're able to you know, start off life very successful instead of having to figure out how to come up with $500 to $700 for tools for their new jobs. So it's been a very exciting journey. And then lastly, Michelle Obama from her, her wonderful book called Becoming. Michelle says, your story is what you have, what you will always have. It is something to own. Everything that I've shared with you today have been little pieces of my life that I turned into something positive. So my encouragement for anybody um, that has gone through anything in their lives at all, you have a way to be able to turn something very negative into something positive and change many people's lives in, um, in the process. So that is my word of advice for today. And I thank you guys for your time. And I'm so available to answer any questions if you have them. So thank you so much.